With that said, here's this question. Open up your Bible if you can. If you can bring it up or you want to just read it. Or you want to yes, have brother, the Bible. There you up. go. I am showing it live now oh, on screen. Oh, there you go. All right. John 16, 7. Open it up because here's the objection. If I understood your objection, I'm going to repeat it. But first, let me objection. So this is going to benefit all of you. John 16, 7. All right. So here's the question. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So the objection goes like this. Here's the objection. How can the comforter be or the helper be the Holy Spirit when Jesus says, I must go for him to come? Because if it's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was already there. The Spirit was already there when Jesus is on earth. He was there before Jesus came to the earth. But whoever this helper is, he wasn't there and would only come after Jesus left. So how can he be the Holy Spirit? Do you guys understand the objection so I can answer it before I move on? Let me just remember there's a 16 second day. Now, as they do it, I want you to line up Luke 1, Luke 1, 15, comma, right? And then you're going to do 41, comma, and then you're going to do 67, Semicolon, not comma. You got to do semicolon now. And then two, 25 to 35. Okay. Now, so you guys understand it, right? So the Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus came, while Jesus came. But whoever this helper is, he wasn't there and would only come later. Well, are they right? Was the Holy Spirit already there? Yeah, let's read it. Luke 1 15. Now open it up and read for us, brother. Luke 1 15. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Now, this is John the Baptist. Yes, this sir. is long before Jesus started his ministry. John the Baptist would be filled with the Spirit in his mother's womb. So the Holy Spirit was there filling John. Who else did the Holy Spirit fill? What's the next verse? And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe, baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now his mother is filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is even before Jesus is born. Mary, the blessed mother, just conceived Jesus. Okay, what about John's father? Luke 167. Now, his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying. So John's parents and John, while still in the womb, all filled with the Holy Spirit. Even before the Blessed Virgin conceived Jesus and during Jesus' conception. Now, when Jesus is born, were there others who were filled and guided by the Spirit? Yeah, Simeon, Luke 2, 25 to 35, specifically Luke 2, 25 to 28. Read it. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And his man, uh, and this man was just the devout, just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. So he had the Holy Spirit too, right? Yes, sir. And Jesus had just been born, and they're going to present him in the temple. So keep going. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said. Now you can God. stop there. You got it, right? Yes, sir. Three times the Holy Spirit is mentioned in reference to Simeon. So there was the Holy Spirit already active and on the earth before and during and after Jesus' conception and birth? Yes. Yes. What about in the Old Testament? Let's go to some Old Testament examples. Are you ready? Yes, sir. If you go up, put on Genesis 41, 38. Let's line them up. I'm not going to give you all of them, but some of them. Genesis 41, 38. Okay, 38. Yeah, now uh, semicolon. Exodus 31, 3, semicolon. Okay, now put, I'm saying Numbers 24, verse 2, semicolon. Deuteronomy 34, verse 9, 34, verse 9, semicolon. 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. Comma, 
comma, 9 to 11, semicolon. Oh, by the way, put Judges 634. I forgot that one. Judges, that's no, okay. So, yeah, put Judges 634. And then I'll give you a few more. 634. 634. And then you do Psalm 5111. Psalm, not Palms. What Palms? You're, you sound like uh, Uthman ibn Farouk. <laughs> Okay, Uthman, 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 Psalm 5111, semicolon, 14310. 14310. 143, yeah. And then semicolon. And then final one, because there's too many. Micah 3 8. M I C K M I C A H. Okay. Now go ahead. Now read it for us. Is the Holy Spirit there? Was he there in the in the Old Testament? And dwelling, empowering, working through the prophets. Read. Genesis 41, 38. And Pharaoh said to the servants, Can we find such a one in this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Now that's Joseph. So Joseph had yep. the Holy Spirit, right? Yep. Keep on. Exodus 31, 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manners of workmanship. That's Basileel. So the Holy Spirit filled them to empower him to construct the tabernacle. Keep going. Numbers 24, 2. And Balaam raised his eyes and saw Israel encamped according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Side note. Balaam, or Balaam, was the false prophet, a sorcerer, who was into witchcraft and sorcery, whom God condemned to death. And yet even here, the Holy Spirit inspired him. So I want you to learn something before we move on. The Holy Spirit is so almighty and glorious and majestic, he can even cause and inspire false teachers to speak truth. Because Balaam, Balaam, a false prophet, a sorcerer who was into sorcery witchcraft, who enticed Israel to worship Baal and commit orgies, was put to death by orders of God. But before he did that, the Holy Spirit came upon him and compelled him to prophesy the truth about Israel and the future about Israel. Who did that? The Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit is so majestic and glorious and almighty, he can even have false teachers speak truth. So go ahead. Amen. Deuteronomy 34, 9. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. The Moses spirit of wisdom. Even though they put lowercase, it's meaning the Holy Spirit who gave him wisdom to be able to lead Israel. Amen. Keep on. First Samuel 10, 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. This is talking about Saul. Samuel told Saul, the Holy Spirit will come and make you a new creation, cause you to be born again, a new creation. Here is being born again, being made new, a new creation already in the Old Testament. The Spirit of the Lord will come on you, Saul, and he'll make you a new man, a new creature, cause you to be born from above so that you can then be empowered by the Spirit, as long as you don't resist him, to rule in accord with God's will. But sadly, he rebelled and the Spirit left him and an evil spirit possessed him. Now what happened to him in 9 to 11? Same chapter for Samuel 10, 9 to 11. 9 to 11. So it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. Now notice the sign before you go on. Notice the sign that Saul had become a new creation, a new man, transformed. And now he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He started prophesying a sign that now the Spirit had come upon him and changed his nature to be able to rule in accord with God's will. So finish it. And it happened when all who knew him formerly saw that he indeed prophesied among the prophets, that the people said to one another, what is this that he has come upon the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? So there you go. Now the rest, read the rest so we can then answer your question. David, Judges, oh, no, this, is, this is Gideon. I'm sorry. Judges 634. Gideon. 634. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpet and the... The Abiezrites gathered behind him. So again, the Holy Spirit is active in the Old Testament. You see it? 
He yeah. fills people. He indwells people. He empowers people. He transforms people. So he was there in the Old Testament. He was there during the time of Christ. What about David? What does David say? Because he committed adultery. This is a passage that many use to show you can be cut off from salvation and lose salvation and be rejected by the Spirit and end up dying. Because notice what David says. He has committed adultery and murder, and he's afraid that now he'll be cut off and die. So he says, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So does David's afraid. Because of my sin, I deserve that you cut me off from your presence, take away the Holy Spirit of life, and hand me over to death. But please don't do that. Have mercy on me. So even David knew he needed the Holy Spirit to be preserved and empowered to live a life pleasing to the Lord. Because without the Holy Spirit, he would die and wither. Amen. So what, what does Psalm 143.10 say? Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. So who empowers him to lead him in the righteous path? The Spirit of God who is good, right? Yep. Okay, the final ones. Go ahead. Mike, I am. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. So there you go. Now, did everyone see that the Holy Spirit has been active from the time of creation and was active and present even during the time of Jesus' virginal conception and birth. So the Holy Spirit was there. Everyone saw that? Yep. I know you saw, so I want to let, give them a chance. So if you saw that, then now we have to explain what Jesus meant in John 16, 7, that he must go for the helper to come. If the helper is the Holy Spirit, why would Jesus need to go for the Spirit to come? Because the Spirit was already there. Well, now let me give you the answer. Now go back up. Let's get a look at the answer. Okay, now put in John 14. I'm going to show you the answer from our Lord. John 14, 16 to 17. And then semicolon. 1, 32 to 33. Semicolon. 7, 38 to 39. Okay. Now let me show you. Jesus actually says the helper is there already. He already said that. He already said. The helper, who is the spirit of truth, he's already here. So why did you say, I must go for him to come? Now read this for me. Now we're going to see the answer. And I'll pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So now, did you catch it that Jesus is saying the helper is here? He's right here with you. And you know he's with you because he's working through me. But then what will happen? He will then be in you. Right now, he's with you because he's in me working through me. But then he'll be in you. When will he be in you? When I leave. Did you catch it? Well, I'm waiting for you, Adam. Did you catch it? Yes. And so Jesus says, you disciples know who he is. He's here with you. Where, where is he? He's in me, working through me. And him and I, with the Father, are doing the miracles. So the miracles are showing you he's here with me. But then he'll be in you. When will he be in you? When I leave. Why is it he'll only be in them, working through them, when Jesus leaves? You can now read John 1, 32, 33, the next passages. Read that for me. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him, Christ. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, you see, when the Holy Spirit came down visibly, and John saw the Holy Spirit appear visibly, as a dove, it said it came down and remained on Jesus. That's the answer. From the time Jesus began his ministry, the spirit remained on Jesus and now would work through Jesus's physical body to bring people to Christ. So he remained on him from that moment on. Then when Jesus was glorified, then the spirit came into the disciples. Now read John 7, 38, 39. Yes, sir. And there's your answer. 
he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the holy spirit was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified did you get your answer absolutely sir so why did absolutely. you say i must go for the spirit to come because as long as i'm on earth the spirit will be with me in me in all his fullness working through me and he'll remain with me until i'm glorified and after i'm glorified then he will be given to all of you who believe amen so, right. so did you get the answer now absolutely all right we're done brother so that's it i hope you got it